Hi, my name is Jim Byrne, Principal Systems Engineer for Data Pivot Technologies. Today I'll be going over ComVault One Touch Recovery, otherwise known as Virtualize Me in the ComVault world. And what this is, this is not just regular old bare metal recovery. Um, this is bare metal recovery of a physical box to either VMware or Hyper-V using a ComVault wizard that makes the process very easy to do. And if you have any questions on uh, Virtualize Me, you can send an email to comvault at datapivottech.com. You'll reach me or one of the, our other fine engineers. We'll be glad to answer any questions you have. Or if you like, we can schedule some PS time for you if you have a big project or you've got to um, convert a bunch of physical machines. We'll be glad to help you out. Okay, with that being said, let's take a look at the Data Pivot Lab, and I'll just go over a little overview of what OneTouch is all about. So here we have our lab, and you can see that there's a comm serve, and there's a uh, media agent with the virtual server agent installed on it. I have a physical box and a VMware uh, ESX host. So what I'm going to do today is I backed up a CentOS 7 uh, Linux physical, vir physical machine, and what we're going to do is I'm going to recover it into VMware. So it's going to automatically convert it for us. So just to give a quick overview of what OneTouch is all about, uh, the first thing you have to do with OneTouch is you need to back it up so that you capture the system state of the machine. That way Commvault knows how to set up all the uh, network interfaces, how to partition the disks, set up the boot for the box, and all that kind of stuff. Um, the next thing you need to do is you need to have the ComVault OneTouch ISO. I'm going to show you where that is in the ComVault site so you can download it. And when I do the example showing OneTouch, I'll go over the ESX data store and what this is all about. And then third, kicking off um, Virtualize Me in ComVault. Really easy. All you do is right click on the client, select Virtualize Me, and then just fill out the prompts in the wizard and off you go. It's literally that easy. So again, we'll go through this, go over how you set up the backup, how to get the ISO that you need to do uh, one touch and where to put it up on your ESX host. And then we'll go off, how, we'll go over how to um, kick off a virtualize me recovery. Okay, so let me get out of this. All right, we'll minimize this. Now, let me just go over what we have here. First thing we have to do is if you're going to do virtualize me, you have to set the box up so that you have one touch enabled. So the machine that I'm going to do, I've already backed this guy up. So if I look at my CentOS 7 box, I right click on it. Let me get to the right spot first. And let's go here. And I'm, what I'm doing is I'm right-clicking on the default sub-client, and then we're going to go to Advanced. And this little one-touch box, all you do, click that, and that's it. And then what you would do is you would right-click on it, say Backup, select a full backup, and click OK. I'm not going to run this because I've already done this because I... Don't want to have everybody sit here staring at the video for five minutes while I uh, do this backup. But that's literally all there is to it. I would just click OK and off it goes. So now I have a full backup of my machine that has the system state included in it. So we're at basically here. Step one is done. Now let's go over this. Where, what, what's the deal with this ISO? So let me... Uh, show you what that's all about. I'm just going to minimize this for a second. And I have the ComVault site. When you're a ComVault customer, you can go to ma.comvault.com. This is where they keep all their, um, their downloads and things. And what I did is I am in the service pack for my version. The, current, the version I'm using right now is version 11 service pack 18. So you, know, you need to make this ISO match the version that you're using in ComVault right now. Now, if you scroll down here, I'm doing uh, virtualize me to a virtual environment. But what's really nice, if you've ever had to um, go to SunGuard and do um, bare metal recovery, 
the thing that's a pain in the neck is finding the drivers. So Commvault has pre-built um, one-touch ISOs for Windows. So you can see they have Dell drivers, HP drivers. This one here is just the uh, the generic one-touch disk. If you maybe you're going to a you know a no-brand machine, but if you're going to Dell or HP, they got you covered. The drivers are already there for you. And then we'll scroll down a little more here. This is what I'm using today. They have one here for Linux. So I'm going to be recovering CentOS 7. So this is the one I would download. So I've already downloaded this ISO and I've got it staged up on my ESXO. So let me run back over here to the lab environment. And let's go into our ESX environment. And what you'll see is I have um, for my data stores, I actually just made a, a data store called ISO and I just throw everything in here. And it's all of uh, where I keep all my images. I actually just uploaded um, my ISO in here. So there's a lot in here, but if you look carefully, I'm gonna go down here a little bit and I'll show you. And as you're saying, boy, this guy should really clean up his uh, ISO stash here. I got a lot of old stuff in here I gotta get rid of. Um, <laughs> So this is it right here. Service Pack 18. So this is the ISO. Um, you're going to see me mount this when we do the one touch recovery. So let's go through what we need to do to start the one touch recovery. So here we are. We have our CentOS 7 physical box running on hardware. And you've been told, look, we're sick of supporting this physical hardware. We want this thing on a VM. So you've already set this thing up for one touch by checking that box under advanced settings. You've done a full backup. We're ready to go. So I'm going to right click here. All tasks. Virtualize me. And you can do VMware or Hyper-V. I'm a, obviously a VMware guy, so we're going to do this. And you can pick your point in time or you can do it from the latest backup. Uh, I'm just going to pick a day in advance. So that's what we're going to pick here for our time. I'm going to click next. Now, I mean, it's really nice how they have this set up. It's very easy to figure out. This is your vCenter. I already have um, vCenter backups set up, so this is all configured. Um, and then I also have my virtualization client picked out. My ESX host is clicking the button. It goes and talks to vCenter, pulls down what's there. And I'm going to throw it on this SSD. And then uh, you can go to your, this is where you go to the ISO path. And remember how I showed you just a second ago? I have, I just have a data store with a bunch of ISOs on it. That's all it is. And scroll down a little bit. And there's my SP18, you recognize that name. And ever, okay. This is, you know, you can overwrite this if you want to, and it'll warn you. This is going to unconditionally overwrite it, so you better be sure if you do this. So I'm going to say no, because <laughs> I don't need to, because it doesn't exist. All right, and next. Now, this is all the stuff you can do to how you want the VM configured. And I, I do have uh, firewall rules set up for my groups in Commvault. So for me, I have to set a group or this thing won't work so that the uh, firewall rules get set up. But if you just have a vanilla network, you don't have to do anything here. So that's why I'm picking my group. Otherwise, you don't need to do that. Now, the login here, this is the login that you use when you log in with the GUI. Now, you're obviously, you're in the GUI, so it's able to pick up whatever you used right here. So it's going to use the currently logged in account. And then for your configuration, <clears throat> The number of CPUs, um, I usually just bump this up a little bit. It makes it go a little faster. I'm an impatient person. Uh, and then the, you have your suffix here. And then here you have your name servers. That's my name server I'm going to use. And you can see this is why you captured the system state. Because you can see the name of the, uh, of the interface. So I'm going to edit this. And I'm going to say, hey, I'm going to, I want you to put this over here. And there's my adapter. So now you see how it has a network label. 
Then you can go to your disk configuration and you know you can pick automatic layout if you want combo to go through and do it or you can leave it manual it'll just partition the disk like that and then it says here what type of provisioning you like I usually leave it as thin but a lot of places you've already got thin provisioning in your storage hardware so I'll just put it on thick because it doesn't matter <laughs> um, and these are your restore options now copy precedent what's this all about what what this is for is in combat you can have your on-site copy your primary copy is copy zero you might be replicating to an off-site location that would be copy number one so if your ESX host is in the off-site location pick number one but for what we're doing here I'm just gonna pick zero because that's all I got and then here if you wanted to clone the machine I could give it a new client name new host name and I could just I can actually use this as a cloning process if I want to okay and then once you have everything set up click next again and then here it tells you when you want to run it or you could schedule this maybe you want to run it at a, a particular time when nobody's doing anything so you could if you're in a busy environment or you can just run it immediate and click finish now what I did to speed things up uh, the one thing you'll notice when you do a one touch recovery it's meant to run on a variety of different um, uh, source um, source systems like you could have CentOS 7, CentOS 8, you could have various flavors of Linux so when you do it you'll notice sometimes you're waiting for an interface to come up it seems to me like the way Commvault did this is they put a lot of um, timing scripts in it so it just seems like it always takes quite a while to get going so it's not the fastest thing in the world but it, um, it definitely gets it done and it's super easy this particular VM end-to-end -end, once I clicked virtualize me and walked away it took about 20 minutes so with that said, I'm gonna, I, what I did is I recorded it so I can actually move through this a little faster. So let me close this here. And I'm going to be watching a video in a video. There we go. Come on. There we are. So here's the lab environment. Now, when I did this, um, my previous recovery, I still had this here. And I did check overwrite the VM so if you watch carefully you'll see this guy get shut off and deleted and a new one get created so what I did here is uh, one of the really nice things with Commvault is if you have a job you can do right click and say resubmit and you can you'll have all the settings again so you don't have to fill everything out so you're gonna see me do that here so let me uh, click play and here you'll see I have a virtualize me there and I'm gonna right click on this guy and we're going to say resubmit the job and then it's going to bring up a screen and it has my settings from last time it saves a lot of typing so here you can see the uh, vCenter the virtualization client where I'm going to put it the the, uh, the ISO path that I had talked about the overwrite VM is checked and then we're going to go next And here you'll see my, all my ComServe details where, where I'm going to connect. We were just going over this. There's my group, and there's a the user I'm logged into. Then we're going to go to the configuration, and you can see there that I have the number of CPUs set to 4, 8 gig of RAM. And there's my network card. You can see I'm on my, I have my network label. I'm going to be on my 8 subnet. So I pick that. And it's gonna that's the address that's gonna get assigned. And then for the disk configuration, those that's how everything was laid out. And I just left those at the defaults. And I got a 20 gig disk I'm gonna restore to, left it at thin. And then the restore options. Again, we're gonna go from zero. And I'm not gonna be I'm not gonna clone it, so leave that blank. And then next immediate we're gonna go right now or you could schedule if you like but we're, we're gonna go right now so then I clicked finish and we'll go to the job controller here and there it is virtualize me now at this point you could literally just walk away go get a you know bite to eat or something and when you come back this will be done so what I'm gonna do here it was pretty quick but the old CentOS 7 VM got deleted and then it just recreated it and what I'm going to do here is bring the window up 
so that we can watch this thing run. You can see the stages of what's involved. So there it is. It just booted off that live CD. That's the CD we downloaded from Commvault. So the thing is booted. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to move, move things around a little bit so I can just kind of leave this. And, you know, so we can watch the progress as it goes. And what's nice is the video, I'm going to slide it forward just to fast forward through this. Uh, when we get to some parts that where it's just sitting. So let me just get this, these windows squared away. All right, there's that. And then in the background, I'm just going to move the uh, console, move it down a little bit. And in the background there, you can see that it's booting up off of an ISO. And for this process, it looks to me like it's a uh, SUSE Linux that they're using. Okay, there's Virtualize Me is still running. Now it says that it's waiting. What it's waiting for is the uh, machine that's built right here, the CentOS 7 VM to fully boot up and then Commvault's going to install a, a small version of its um, intelligent data agent so you can do the restore. So let me let this sit here. I'm going to fast forward a little bit. Okay, so here we go. Get ready to boot. Now this is, it goes through and configures the network interfaces. This can take a good minute, so be patient with this as it goes. And watch my timer there. See right now it says 449. Watch that. It does take a while for this to configure. So it's almost a full minute. This is what I was talking about earlier. I think there are timers in here. Because I know in real life when I go to configure a network interface, it doesn't take that long. Now here, what it's doing is the information that I hit in that wizard, it's connecting back to the, to the comm serve to see if it can talk to it. And it's doing some checks. And then we get here. Now at this point here, it's actually installing Commvault onto the OS so that it, you can actually do your restore. So this part is going through. Now see, when it gets to this part, it shuts Commvault down. And again, must, I, I swear there's timers here. It takes a while for this part to go. So if you watch, watch the timer on the, on the left there. It's at 6.51 right now. So there we go. It stops it, starts it. Still waiting. There, it's up. And then let me go a little more. And then what will happen is you'll see this start. Look over here, down below, bang. There's a restore job that just started down below. So now what it's doing is it's going to Commvault and it's grabbing the system state. So this particular restore job is going to run and it's going to grab what it needs to, you know, figure out how it wants to set up the new system. So let me fast forward a little bit here. Okay, so it, it got the system state done. And you'll see down below there, see that job is now completed. Go a little farther here. Now, this is kind of cool. What it's doing right here is recreating a, a NIT RD so that the box can boot up. So if you look over on the left there, it says recreate the restore, restored init RD and prepare for stage two. You'll see it boot. It actually boots into it, the system from here. So we'll fast forward here a little bit because this, this takes a little while. Boom. Okay, now it's preparing the kernel for a boot. So now you're booting the restored kernel, and you're going to lose this screen, and you'll see the thing start booting. And let me fast forward a little more here. Okay, there we are, booting away. Yeah, 
I'm just going to fast forward here a little bit. This is what I was talking about. See, it says we'll pause for the USB subsystem to settle down. Yeah, it pauses for a while, all right. <laughs> okay, now it's got to reconfigure the network interfaces for stage two. Getting closer here. Okay, we're past that. Now it's reinstalling the Commvault software again because we're on a new OS now. Now you've started, it's gone through, it's installed. It started the Commvault service. There is, um, you know, a few little small standard errors here, but they're not a big deal. They're nothing to worry about. It's, it's installed. And then it's, it does sit for a while. One of the things you got to do with this is just be patient. You think, is this thing hung? It's not hung. <laughs> it's doing stuff in the background. So let me go here, and I'm going to play again. So at this point, it's received information from Commvault on how these disks need to be set up. So now it's gone into the disk. It's formatting it, getting it all ready to go. And if you look in the background there, see how it says 55% and it's waiting? Now it's going to do a full machine restore. And we'll fast forward here a little bit. Okay, and at this point, it's getting ready to do the file system restore. Now look down below there, see that job kick off again. Now, we, we already did the system state, we got that part done. Now we're grabbing the data that makes up the, uh, the Linux machine. So now it's restoring all the data into those various file systems. And that's gonna take a little while, so let me just fast forward here. Okay, if you look down below, do you see how it said the restore is finished? Okay, play right here. So now it's done. And I, I've noticed that it always goes 5% to done. <laughs> Just the way it is. So now it's doing the grub install so that the, uh, the Linux machine can boot. And this part here can sit for quite a while. So let's crank through this. You know, watch the time as I'm doing this. See, it just it's doing some post restore operations, which takes a while. Okay, done. That's the screen you get. Now you'll notice it says CentOS. So you, this is actually booting off the disk now. When we when we first started this little movie here. Um, you saw that it was booting from the ISO. Now we're booting from the disk. And this is uh, CentOS 7, so it, it boots pretty quick. And we'll fast forward here a little bit. Oh, I think we're, uh, we're just about up now. What I'm waiting for is to get the uh, login prompt. Let's fast forward here a bit. Okay, so there's your, your login. Now what I'm going to do here is I logged in as, uh, as root, and what I wanted to do is reboot the machine. Not, not reboot the machine, pardon me. I want to shut the machine down, turn it off, and then turn it back on just to make sure everything is good. Because I just wanted to make sure that it wasn't a warm boot. I wanted to do a cold boot to make sure everything loads up nice and clean. So here we are. I'm doing an init zero. And when we look over into VMware, you're going to see that this is off. And now we're going to power this guy back on again. And now you'll see this guy, he'll come up nice and clean. Boom. There you go. 
And there you have it. That's a one touch recovery. So let me close my movie here real quick. Come back over here to the lab. And so let me uh, bring this up again, my little presentation here. <laughs> uh, so I guess, you know, just to follow up and just give a quick review again, um, again, just do a backup with one touch enabled, upload the Commvault ISO, get it all set up. And then you literally just right click on the client, say virtualize me and off you go. It's that easy. And now a lot of you may be asking, um, the one thing I didn't put on here was why would you want to do this? Um, most of the time people want to do this just because they're getting off of old hardware and they want to virtualize stuff. But one of the really good uses for this is uh, I have customers in manufacturing that have uh, basically like a, it's like a desktop PC controlling machinery and things like that. And one touch recovery is really important for them. They need to have the ability to recover back onto hardware, say in a factory. And the question people have said to me is, hey, how do, how do I know this is even going to work? So what you can do is you could pick that machine over in a factory, right click on it, say virtualize me, same process you know, that you do in regular one touch recovery. And you can do a, a one touch recovery into a VM in VMware. And you can say, hey, this, this, if we need to do this, it'll work because you can test it out in VMware. So that, that's one really good use for this. If you want to just attach bare, uh, test bare metal recovery, um, you know, with without much work, you can go right into VMware. All right, and I thank you. Uh, thanks for watching my video today, so I could help you guys help you understand uh, Commvault One Touch Recovery. Virtualize me again. My name is Jim Byrne. And any questions about this uh, video, what you saw today, feel free give me an email over at Commvault at datapivottech.com. You'll get a response from me, or uh, Edgar, Edgar Melendez or Paul Stopko, our other engineers, and uh, they'll be glad to uh, let you know uh, how you can use this, or if you have any questions, you know, trying to, trying to do it yourself, we'll be glad to help you out. And also, we have uh, PS services available if you have a big project or you just, you know, don't have time to do it. We'll be glad to do it for you. All right, thank you very much.